Welcome back to Tendis Vlogs Tendistry. First of all, a big thanks to you all for watching the first part of the unboxing Quick Sleeper 5 Intra Ausher Anesthesia System. Let's continue with that. In this episode, we will do a assembly of the system and a quick demo of how to use the system. But before we proceed, if anyone among you has not watched the first part of uh, this series, I will leave a link here. Please do watch uh, the first video and then come back and continue watching this video. Let's go. Welcome Dr. Rupesh to this episode. Thank you so much Dr. Ready Ready to have me. Absolutely. Okay, so Let's what are we it. going to do today? Okay, so today we are going to be doing the assembly of the quick sleeper device ah. as well as a small uh, take on how the device functions. Okay, great. Uh, what all do we need for that? Okay, so from the previous video, whatever the components were there inside the box, that's the major things that are required. Ah. But we do require two things externally. Uh, number one is a power source through which we can uh, connect the device. Mm. And the second one is uh, the anesthetic carpule that we need to place in the device. Let's go, let's go. All right, let's do it. So let's begin with the assembly of the Quick Sleeper 5 Intra Oceus Anesthetic Device. Let's begin with the handpiece itself. It's connected via a USB cable to the smart control box on one port and the other port is attached to the power adapter which in turn is connected to an external power plug or a source. We have other slots also that is purely for technical uh, purposes and once it is connected you have a light indicator on the smart control box itself and this is how the anesthetic device or the handpiece looks after it is connected. You have certain light indicators, three switches and a nose piece. This nose piece is from which you connect your rotary container and the needle. Now this device functions through the batteryless wireless foot pedal. Indeed, it has no connections as you can see and once I show the functioning you will see that it actually works without any sort of external wired connection. You have certain indicators or certain markings on this foot pedal as well. Similar to the intraoceous anesthetic device or the handpiece, you have the same markings here as well. This actually is the mode on which you are going to be functioning and that is to your choice depending on what case you're doing you can choose it for your purpose but primarily we use it in the IO that is the intra -oceous. all right this particular switch is for aspiration purposes and for our use we are going to be focusing on these two switches this one indicates the anesthesia which means depending on your mode you can deliver the anesthesia by pressing this and this one is for the intra osseous rotation or penetration now let's move on to how we can attach the needles the DHT patented DHT needles onto the device you have the steel rotary container with this compartment in it to which we attach the carpule It's as simple as that. Hold the handpiece, hold it in proximity, and just rotate it. Now the device is attached alongside with the carpule, the container. Now to it, we add or we attach our DHT needle. These are patented needles. I hold it like this and now I will be pressing the screw button continuously. That is it. Now that we've attached the DHT needle onto the handpiece, we can proceed on with the demonstration on the job. 
So how do we use the quick sleeper on a patient? Let's consider this particular jaw to be one part of the patient and the lower first molar to be the tooth in question. We are supposed to be anesthetizing this particular tooth and maybe other teeth if required. The quick sleeper works in such a way that the anesthesia is delivered in three stages. Step or stage one is delivering or anesthetizing the soft tissue around the tooth. This is going to be a very shallow or a minimal anesthetic delivery. We approach the area at an angle of 15 to 20 degrees. But while we do that, make sure that the DHT needle or the specific indicator on the DHT needle is visible through the window of the rotary container. The reason being that the bevel is going to be on the opposite surface of the D. So the D is present or visible, the bevel is going to be on the undersurface and that is going to be in contact with the soft tissue. Having kept this in position, as I mentioned, at an angle of 15 to 20 degree, we penetrate or we we pierce through the soft tissue effortlessly. It is because of this particular needle it's possible. Once we have done that, the next thing that we are supposed to do is anesthetize or deliver at least two to three or three to four drops of anesthesia and that is done by pressing this particular foot pedal. On pressing this the anesthesia comes in slowly with few drops. After step one is complete we take out the needle, orient it in such a way that we are going to deliver the anesthesia and that is done by penetrating the cortical bone. We orient it in such a way that the needle comes in contact with the bone. That is the first and major difference from step one. In step one it is a very shallow entry just before the periosteum and in step two it's in contact. Once you have kept it at an angle of 40 degrees to the long axis and this is in particular for the mandibular uh, T. 40 degrees to the long axis. Now we have to press this particular foot pedal which enables the needle to rotate and penetrate through the cortical plate into the cancellous bone. So this is just going to be a virtual way showing you how the needle rotates and it can penetrate the cortical bone. Usually on the third rotation, the cortical plate is penetrated and with one more further rotation, you bring about the needle to at least the three-fourth of the needle being inside the cancellous bone with only one-fourth being visible. If you can see from this jaw, the needle will be placed very close to the apex and now the second stage is done. So what's next? The next step or step three is to deliver the anesthesia within this particular space or chamber and for doing that we go back to this switch once again or this foot pedal this foot pedal now delivers the anesthesia to your requirement what you have to be aware of is with this device you can anesthetize anywhere from one to six or eight teeth with one carpule or depending on your requirement depending on the case itself once now I have delivered the anesthesia I simply take out the device close it and this is where the needle holder comes in place as this is going to be attached to the chair I just place it and that's it once this is done, this is just going to take hardly a few seconds, now you can immediately start working on the patient.
Ladies and gentlemen, now that you've seen the unboxing and the quick assembly of the device, what's next? As we did mention earlier, it's going to be the demonstration on a patient and the patient being none other than Dr. Matthew himself. Here it goes. I set the panorama. If you look at the panorama of the block, this is one here. Okay. I'll put the marker here so it will be, give, give me a charge. I'm sorry, I'm not good. Make sure it's in process, okay? Uh, not all. Okay. Uh, That's it. Branching, good branching. I always like to start with a little bit more inside here. When no you progress, but just in case. Mm -hmm. Section two. We move, we move the things from now. I don't have to wait anyway. I want to just uh, close the channel. I want to make sure that there is no pain. Look, I'm touching the one. Okay, no pain? No pain. I will start breathing. Oh, the, the patient, you will feel a little bit uh, vibration and sound. Don't worry about That's it. Give an answer. Thank you, Mr. Anesthesia. Now I can talk to you. I will tell you if you feel a little complications in your heart, don't worry about it. It's normal, it's nothing, everything is going to be fine. Uh, I want to give you like half, let's say, less than half, why not? It's now a quarter, the first feet means a quarter. Mm -hmm. okay. And then I protect the lip with the lip protector and make sure that it's on the left side. Everything will be fine. Okay. I think normally the phone has sensitivity for you because there is an exposed root. Well, we will see. Okay, I stop now. Okay, I will not get so much. Okay, I will pull it out gently. That's it. Come on. And if I want to do this, now I can do it slightly. Can you go uh, You have to tell me your experience. Okay. okay. If I want to make sure that uh, you will feel that a bit, the two times. Partially five, maybe the five or three, but four, three, it's good. I think the four or three, it will be good. I didn't give except a quarter. But I can work now, I'm sure that I can work for like 10 minutes, 15 minutes for five, four, three. Ah. If I give one quarter, I can work partially for the five, four, three, two, one, for sure. One, two, three, four. I do it every day. And if I give this, I want to do preparation, one, two, three, four, I can do it within, for the full carpet, I can do it within like 40 minutes. Mm -hmm. Okay? All right. But okay. your pain experience? Yeah, it was a very good bit. <laughs> Did you imagine that I can drill your bone without pain? Yeah? It's, it's, yeah, yeah, the quick sleeper experience was very good. Yeah. Actually, I wanted to try on my team before I buy Yes, I did it. Well, I did it. I did it. 
I did it once because I cannot believe it. I, I should try it. Okay, okay. okay. Yeah. something growing in my bone. Oh, what's that? Okay. Except uh, when I say upper, lower, and uh, no, I, I needed three drills to get to the three quarter or more than half here. Ah, right. okay? okay? Sometimes I, I, I can do it up to six drills. Uh -huh. Sometimes the bone is dense. I have to remove the needle. It's uh -huh. blocked. I do it again. Sometimes. Right. But maximum six. For the upper.